Nidhi and I have left the city for the bush. I know, they finally let us out. Survival course, here we come! This week it's all about the silky saw and the silky axe put it into survival situation. We're going to explain what would you use and where. Stay tuned for this week's video. And what a fun day it was. We got to hang out with Rich Hungerford, the senior instructor at Bush Law Australia. Okay, so why is this so cool? Well, as you probably know, Shanae and I know our specs when it comes to the tools that we sell, but let's face it, we really don't know a lot about surviving out in the bush. So today we are super lucky because Rich is teaching us so many different things and he has the experience to back it. An ex-SES warrior, I think he knows what he's talking about. So we are listening to every word he says and sorry, they are quiet words, but uh, we have put subtitles, so we hope you enjoy it. What was I thinking when I signed up for this? Great idea, Nita. Let's go bush where the snake lives. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to get the other sort of use. So a bit like that. That's kind of a useful bit of wood for us, you know. Survival oil. That's the same saw. That's the same saw, but with a larger tooth. So for more sort of green. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's Yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Try this on that same branch, the little nub that's left. See how the one you just used vibrated a bit? Yeah. That tells you the tooth could fit big for what you're cutting. Oh, I'm going to, do you want to just cut a little bit off the end? Because I just thought you should compare on the exact same piece of wood. It's good, you know, comparing the same piece of wood. So how did that feel? Definitely. Is that sort of a general purpose? So that's branch? basically that size branch that you just cut, that's a really good tooth size for a live bit of gum, that size. When the tooth's too big, the one, the previous saw, you felt it vibrated and jumped a bit. And the problem with that is it can vibrate and jump out of the cut and on your hand. Yep. I'm a half in the sun, so <laughs> I'm going to more than once. Eh, eh. And, and now I'm going to ruin it for you because that's going through very smooth. Yeah, so that's great because it folds into itself, so it's easy to put in a pack and compact. Mm -hmm. But now try this: it's a shorter blade, but the comfort of using a fixed saw over a folder. Mm. It's just so okay. much more comfortable. Going through that butter, isn't it? That's right. And it's because you've got more control as well because the handle is pistol gripped, it's, it's molded to the shape of the hand, you're nice and close to the teeth, so it mm. feels really comfortable to use. You know, with the folder, you tended to want to hold where that lever was because it's just more controlled and more comfortable the closer you are to those teeth. Yeah, no, that's definitely, definitely highly efficient. Look at the quality of that. Yeah. So, from a survival point of view, that's just saying that's efficiency. Yeah. And that's the biggest, biggest issue, I think, solve it in terms of calorie conservation. Yep. Um, As opposed to just like, ah, oh, we'll just go hard and get through it. That's right. I brought this one down though because the, the piece of wood you've got on the floor here, yep. if you had to cut that and that's the sort of timber you know you were going out and going to be looking for to build a shelter or a cabin or whatever it is you're doing, that saw you've got there is what we would recommend you would be using on that sort of piece of wood. 
So you want to get the tip of that saw to touch what you're cutting. So you pull the handle and just pull as far as you can so that tip touches it. You want to get that tip to touch if you can. Very, very I'm using that one. You're using that one, are you? So how did you feel with that one? Yeah, that's more coordination because the yep. like it's also this is a loaded branch. So yep. More weight on it. Yeah. So that's definitely like maybe breathing heavy. Yeah. So that's like basically your alternative to a small chainsaw in a fixed saw version. And then we've got one other that I might run up and grab just to show you a big difference because that's a really smooth, easy cutting too. Um, and then we've got one that's a very different style of tree. I'll go down and show you. Speed is what you're after. That is the all. It will bite. Yeah, faster. Yeah. And that's that's sacred still. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's not tearing. No. So it's not tearing, it's cutting. Between a straight and a curved saw, so it's what they call an arched blade. So it's just got a very gentle slope on it, so it shouldn't feel as uncomfortable as that's the boy to use as far as the, the angle of it goes. Mm -hmm. But it's a stronger saw, it's a bit thicker in curve, so harder to break. So what do you think out of the three? That's probably the most efficient. You can know. If that's, that's probably got the high level efficiency. Yep. That's nice. Yeah. Nice and sort of compact enough to Yeah, that's it. That's one I had on the side of the pack before. Um, the cool thing with them as well is they, they all lock into the case. So again, if you've got it on a backpack or even strapped to your leg, and if you, you know, sit down or bend over, they're not going to fall out, which is yeah. really good. It's like losing equipment. Just when you get yeah. tired, yep. dark. Yep. And again, if you are going out collecting some firewood or collecting some branches to make a shelter, you could, if you've got those, um, you know, your clip like this, you could put a clip onto your belt or you oh, could yeah, put yeah. those straps yeah, onto your belt yeah. or the handle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So here we have the Katana Boy 500 Silky Sauce um, is the brand. Um, and it's a great little saw to cut those large logs, like this one. For I love example. it how she says it's little. Well, <laughs> in the Katana family, little. it's little. It's a, it's a baby Katana. That was silky saws, the cut on the push stroke. If it was dirty. <laughs> Just let the saw do the work. Woohoo, nice. Come show us that piece of wood. Does a 
solid piece of wood. From as big as my hand and I have big hands. Nice and simple. Yes! Wow. The Katana Boy 650. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this feels insane. This is so cool. <laughs> okay. Start to cut at the handle. <laughs> Let's do driving the stage. La, la, la. See, look, it's easy. You can like be taking it from the scenery. Yeah, pretty day. Whilst you cut a huge piece of wood for the fire or for your shelter. I'm not sure why we're having such a big piece of wood for the shelter. But you could. Like, it just requires no effort whatsoever. Rather than this daisy. <laughs> what? Oh, it's a daisy. Let the sword do the work, is what they say. Whoop! And then Shanae sabotages you. <laughs> I'm just going to call you Shayana. <laughs> That's your name. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Katana. Katana. The Katana Boy 1000. 1000. Oh, this is going to be so much taller than me. Maybe I should just demonstrate for you guys. This is its, what do you call it? The first run. This is its virgin, what do they call yeah. it? Journey, run, Maybe mission. It's no longer a tree version. It's no longer a beautiful shiny display in our showroom. <laughs> All right, Katana 1000. Ooh, look, my uh, my little survival bracelet matches the Katana 1000. You match. I match. Very exciting. It was meant to be, as I said. All right, that's let's it, boys. You've lost your chance. <laughs> All right. So. Hmm. Okay. Um, All right. Let's have. I need a step on it, don't I? It has really big teeth. These are meant to be the smaller ones. Sure this like pull let go of the hand technique is totally how they designed for it to be used. <laughs> this sort of situation happens in a four wheel driving sense yeah. when you know a tree's fallen from storms or whatnot and it's in the path so they either have to get a chainsaw out or take another route to get to where they want or have something like the katana. <laughs> so always start right next to the handle with any of the silkies, particularly the really big ones. Yep. Because that's where the teeth are the smallest. So a lot of people will say it's crazy to use a saw cutting a piece of wood that big, but that took under a minute. So you probably couldn't have got all your safety gear on, got your chainsaw out, started it up, and cut the piece of wood up much faster than that, I reckon. Yeah. That was easy. Was it? I'm not even breathing here. It's not because I'm sick, man. It's just actually that backstroke. Yep. You just feel it tearing through. Yeah. Do you want to try the smaller one as a comparison? Mm -hmm. You don't have to cut all the way through, obviously. Make you sleep well tonight. <laughs> Prepared by Sinead. <laughs> <That's what they're... laughs> 
unfair us giving you the biggest teeth the biggest saw first and then the smaller one second when you're already fatigued sorry <laughs> I felt it, but... but the thing is as well like this is like putting it to the test because this is a hard piece of wood this isn't exactly freshly fallen hard wood yeah yeah really hard wood look at the quality of the cut though mm. yeah it's a beautiful cut isn't it make yourself this bunch yeah <laughs> I cut this hard piece of timber with this tooth and then compared to this one. So small tooth, hard yeah. one. Yeah. And this is what some people just try. But that is optional. And like the difference between a curved and a straight blade is that curves are a lot easier cutting on this angle, like yeah. below your knees, but then yeah, try. So if you knew that you're just going to be collecting dead wood for firewood, there's no reason to have a big tooth saw with you, if that's all you're going to be doing with it. Yeah, or well, um... Because that'll cut your rope as well, so yeah. you know, you'll be able to use it for your twining your rope. So if you're going to recommend a sort of a general purpose General purpose would be what Sinead gave you originally because that'll do green sappy wood really well as well and it will cope with that, it's just not as easy. That's definitely easier. Yeah. yeah. But the other thing as well, with a saw like a pocket boy, is you can get replacement blades that all fit in, so you could have that in your pack. Oh, yeah. So if you came across some green wood, you could stick that in. It literally takes 20 seconds to swap them, you just need something flat or even the other mm -hmm. blade and, and then put the appropriate blade in because yeah. Like you say, if conserving energy is a big thing, then having the weight of an extra blade in your pack to mean you can easily cut a dry, hard piece of wood might be worth it. Yeah. I mean, that from the craft, the bush craft side of things, right? Yep. That's yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? They're both good, they're, and they're a good size. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Really good size. And I, I, I must be honest, I would, when I first saw them, I think I saw them on one of the videos somewhere around. From, not from you guys, from somewhere else, but yeah. it's probably a bit small. But that's actually really... Yeah. And actually, I haven't seen anyone on a video use them that small. Mm. The ones you see on the video all the time is this one yeah, here. That, yeah, that one. That Gomboy 210. Yeah. So that's probably the most well-known in survival and bushcraft. Yeah. Oh! And that would probably go through. Again, a really good general purpose too. Yeah. 
back. Yeah, put it further back. <laughs> Because you wanted to work out today. <laughs> well, this is this is the thing. This this very efficient. So I'm actually not good. Yeah. So this one I'm here has that. more like the th yellow one, the sawtooth. So tiny bit bigger than the yellow one, but it should cut that wood much easier than the the gomboy you just used. But that gomboy is the saw that you see all the time on the YouTube reviews. Yeah. So that small one there. Yep, the one you just used. That's much more like a. Big, long so all that cutting is happening on the drawer. Yep. Well, I'm just letting that slide back through. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you don't actually have to put a lot of pressure on the teeth. Like you said with the axes, the saw will do all the work. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. See that, I find that side there's doing doing almost an equivalent job. Yeah. At least three, one for each. <laughs> so this is obviously something you can cut through. Yep. Five machete, only on the three things. Very half open. So this guy, again, it can do the job by itself, but this is how we get this. If this is all wet, mm -hmm. this is just damp, but if it's actually soaking it, we want yep. dry stuff in the middle to get that fire kindled. Yes. We can actually just hit it through the other side. Just hit it through the other side. And that's taking out really easily. Right, so we're getting into this dry, yep. dry wood in the middle. So this is an ancient carpentry technique. And there's a knot there, that's where it's stopping there. An ancient carpentry technique, they now use it as a bushcrafting sort of type of process. Yep. It's an ancient carpentry technique. And there's a knot there, that's where it's stopping there. Get up wood and make it either into planks, so if I wanted a plank for some reason, or a shingle. You can just cut it at the width. Yep and then just actually trim the wall all the way down. We end up, for us, as a survival sort of concept, we get this dry wood in the middle. That then allows that fire to yeah. the So if you're in a really, really wet environment, where there's nothing but wet wood around, that's one way we could use a saw and yeah. either a knife or a machete yeah. to access the wood in the middle. Yeah. That's dry. Yeah. And you can keep going down to make that as fine as you want. Yep. How does that feel in comparison to other stuff you use? This feels very much like, do you know your machete? From Timor? It could be just this shape. The Timorese, so we go up there quite regularly. They, they use a machete that's got this very square edge on it, as opposed okay. to normal sort of Yep. Edge. Nothing, nothing near the quality steel, because theirs are made out of carspin. Oh, okay. That's uh, interesting in these little local little forges, but that's, that shape and everything I like because it mm. reminds me of that. Yep. And their handles are made of wood, so you get that yep. vibration going through and you can't do anything with that. Yep. So very, very well designed. You like Did that? you want to try the single beveled one? Yeah. 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 Let's see. It's black and white piece of wood. Splitting down much like a chisel. Yep. Obviously, it's been a chisel edge. And giving us that sort of purchase to stop it splitting out both sides. Yes. So you technically able to go down quite fine material. Mm. Reduce it to sawdust. <laughs> mm. Now we've got some fire starters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's really good. Cool. Does that come with the double bevel as well? Yeah, you, you can get it. Um, they come in five different lengths actually, both styles. Mm. Mm. That, that size there, I could see a lot of people in the, in the 
space I build. Yes. Yeah, yeah well, well, just um, obviously a bit lighter being shorter. Yeah. Um, but I guess dependent on maybe, I don't know if someone's going to use it literally to try and cut down a tree, the longer might be better. Maybe if they're not using a saw. I don't know. It's hard. It's, um, it's hard to say because a lot of, a lot of strains didn't go up. Soon you are. It's heavy. Luckily, I did. So a lot of them, a lot of them, um, I have here for life and limb when they're using it. Yep. So often, they just, they just don't have that level of, it looks like nothing. Yep. But they just don't have that level of coordination. You will, because you'll grow up doing this too, won't you? Yeah? So, because I grew up in New Guinea, where everyone carries a bush knife. Okay. Maybe. This becomes, and this is hardwood, but it's still, that's just chewing for that. Really? So, so that's good, because it's not looking good to me, who doesn't yeah. know what I'm doing. <laughs> what, what we're doing with this is, with hardwood and stuff like this, you see how it's spinning it around? Yeah. So I'm, only, I'm not trying to get the steel to go all the way through it, I'm just trying to nibble away like a beaver. Oh, okay. Around the outside. And, you can and is that for the energy thing you were talking about before, so you're not yeah. sort of overusing your energy? Yeah, and also not overusing the tool. Right, because that's going to blunt it faster. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, the, you know, I should just, like most people, and I say here all the time, I'll sit down, I'll just cut yeah. an axe through it like yeah. it's an axe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're trying, so to, not they're trying to cut through the entire length. So yes. if you try to cut something like this, yep. it's just not energy efficient. Right. So that middle approach, yep. that obviously requires more coordination. Yes, but not as much physical strength. Exactly. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. Is that good as well? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. You often you know, it's a bit like your sort so it's that's almost smooth. Yeah, yeah. No, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's obviously sharp. You carve with it. Yeah. And that like I said, it's not new, that's old. You can see it's old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's a funny thing, I never thought that it was anything particularly interesting until yeah. I came and started teaching civilians. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. They don't know how to use a machete. Ah, uh, yes. Except for people who came here who had grown up in Africa, New Guinea, or yes. Malaysia. Ah, oh, look at that. Easy peasy, I don't know what my problem was. <laughs> 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 I got the termite eat one probably. <laughs> Yeah. Mind you, considering my father was a wood chopper, I probably should hopefully be okay at <laughs> something, mind you. I was terrible at it. You're probably surprising me. What's that? You're probably surprising me. What do you think? Don't worry, I've got plenty of wood for you to chop and get a bit bigger too. You get all the firewood, you probably have an open fire at home, mm. do you? Yeah, we do. Still going at the moment. So it's a full body workout. You yeah. Pick up, the, pick up the logs, chop them into blocks, split the blocks, and then move it all to the fire. Yep. This is the thing that I watch a lot of people do wrong here. I have to stop them because I've had one goat and they chop his leg off. Yeah. Because it's small, small handed. Yes. They forget where that arc's going to go. Oh. Oh, yes. It's just a simple thing. That yes. Happens. You go down to your knees. Yes. Now, if it misses, for whatever reason, 
it's going to go. Of course, that's a good idea. Worst case, it's going to come down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah bang. Otherwise, yep. just the longer the handle, the yes. further the arc is. Yes. Simple dynamics of that people. Yeah. Don't get it. Don't get Yeah. Ironically, it was a you know, state emergency service guy <laughs> with his own axe. Oh no! At nine o'clock at night, after we finished planning for the day, everyone was asleep and he was sitting there by the fire. And he thought, oh, I've got this brand new axe in my pack. Let's have a go. Oh, shivers. I think, it, I think he was doing that. He went, boom, skipped off that and went straight into his shoe. Oh, oh yucks. That was a good, he did a good job. It was six months worth of rehab. Oh my goodness. Uh, for no for no necessary reason. Yeah. Well, I don't know that either, but it's better to. Yeah, well, the length of the handle. You just got on. Oh, yeah. Get some, get some food. Ah, you got snail lunch. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, a good idea. That's good. That's really? Oh! That's great. Really? Oh, brilliant. But that way, again, if anything goes wrong, this, cut, this work is moving away from me. Yes. This, this kinetic energy is going away from me. Yes. It's not coming into me in any way, shape, or form. Yes. That's a really good me. idea. Mm. And like you said, if somebody's using this in a survival situation, they're probably not at their full width yeah, anyway yeah, because they're tired or stressed or. Yeah. Yeah. That's a soft wood, but it's good. Just go home and show my dad. Yeah. <laughs> Silent! <laughs> so I've brought my dad one of these things and he does. Like what you were doing before, just putting it down the center. Yep. So you can see how easy that's going through the wood, having yep. it on that angle rather than trying to go straight across the um, brain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with these, you should always be hitting it at an angle. So it is just going to cut that in half. Yeah. The same way. We're going to cut it. And a traditional action would do the same thing. Like this yes. angle, that angle, this angle, yes. that angle. And that's the way that normally get through it. And then at some point, Alpha is going to the side. They're doing the same thing, but just doing it with a bigger piece of wood. Yes. And they're sort of getting that. Sort of put that point on in an inefficient way without sort of having to sort of spend hours yep. doing it. So when we're making up um, tools, wooden tools, so we use yep. fire hardening as a as a way of preserving metal tools. Yep. So we might have that point point that up to so it's a digging stick. Oh, okay. We harden that up in the fire. Yeah. So we basically crystallise the sap. Yep. And then that becomes a sort of crowbar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were examining this hanging piece of wood, trying to work out what it was for. Sinead made what I thought was a very good suggestion, which was a pinata for bugs. <laughs> And we were toying with the idea of practicing axe skills. Practicing what? Um, yeah. On a moving piece of wood? Maybe to um, get more accurate with their cutting. No pole There's dancing? Pinata. <laughs> pinata of bugs. <laughs> and then it dawned on us. Oh my goodness. Yes. This must be i'm pretty positive i've got it this is like a Clothesline? a frame for your tarp so if you're building a shelter you throw your tarp over it and then you can sleep underneath it and you've got like a roof so this is like a way of having a post without one being in the ground and not having to like stab one into the ground and stuff so this is this is pretty cool <laughs> this is neat or a clothesline i guess so if you're out camping and you can't reach the branch. Maybe they threw it over. No, they have a throw bag. Maybe that's what they did. Yeah, that would be more intelligent. Yeah, I'm <laughs> thinking they get the piece of wood and they spear it. Javelin practice. Okay, they're probably not doing that. <laughs> so yes, I'm imagining we tie a rock or something to the end of the rope, throw it over said branch. Once it comes down, then tie this stick onto it. Okay, so we're 
Okay, so now we're going to find out what this hanging stick is really for. Oh, have you got? You should, I'm getting a the machete. You got to get it. So this is. This is what's called a hanging pole for axe axe gun. So it keeps you mobile and moving all the time. That's. That's pretty cool. It keeps you honest. You do it. Bites. So if you don't get out of the way fast enough, it will hit you. And oh, yeah. Bites. So you can't do anything too fancy because it'll just whack you. And the other ones are the same. It's called a pal. And it's more just sort of stroke practice. So it's doing sort of flow through. Okay, so that looks really cool, but is there a reason you swing the other arm around? Just balance. Balancing? Protection. So this is protecting this. Oh, okay, yep. So it gives me just a bit more yep. atmosphere. And to descend this and keep my, this part of my body protected. Okay. It's kind of dense. It's all sacrificial, this stuff. If you're better off losing that than that. Yes, true, true. Not a very pretty part of humanity's history. No, no. But that's, yeah, that's what these... If you are still listening to my voice, you survived our weekly video too. You are one lucky person. Who knew learning how to survive could be so much fun? Well, I think we've got Rich to thank for that. So we hope you enjoyed watching this video. Apologies again for our bad filming, but we hope you got something out of it. It's so fantastic to be able to see these amazing tools that we sell being used in a real life situation. So we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week. Have a great one. Bye. For now and don't forget to subscribe.